The earth is warm with hope. Cicadas sing and flame trees burst into flower. Honey eaters hold their breath in wonder. And Christmas dawns in Australia. We may seem so far in time and space from Bethlehem and that bright shining star. But if you walk into the day, you will see that creation sings even here, even now. Even as the sounds of joy and hope surround us, we recognise that there are things within us which may be threatened by this new life. And so we hold before you now, loving God, the times when we do not make room for the Christ child in our lives. And we hold those closed places open before you now and ask for healing. And we hold before you, loving God, the people in our community who sleep rough, just like the shepherds did. Who will bring good news of love and peace to them? And we hold open before you the possibility that it may be us. Hold before you, loving God, every child who wakes this morning without the prospect of presents and Christmas dinner. You reveal yourself to us as a child born in need. Give us the courage and grace to follow the star of your gospel that we may give ourselves to the poor, in your name. Amen. The story of the birth of Jesus from the Gospel of Luke. Well, at that time, the Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. And when this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own hometown. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night out in the open taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I'm here with good news for you which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. 
and suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the first angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said each to one another, Well, let's go to Bethlehem and see this baby that has been born, the one of which we have been told. So they hurried off. And they found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angels had said about the child. And all who heard it were amazed. And Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. In this, we hear God's word to us. When I was in my mid-twenties, I was what you might call aspirational. My childhood had been a bit on the deprived side, And in my teenage years, I was very awkward and lacking in self-esteem. But once I hit my mid-twenties, I aspired to make a better life for myself. I started to dress well. I was selective about the activities I wanted to pursue, none of which were church. And so I wanted to move in the more elite social circles of my town. Given that I lived in a small outback town, elite circles is a relative term. But if you get my gist, you will understand that I wanted to be one of the cool set after many years of being seriously uncool. And even in an isolated town, there's still a cool set. I really thought I had arrived when I was invited to be part of a weekly mothers group that was seriously sophisticated. Not for us a tea bag in a mug at morning tea. It was top grade percolated coffee and with increasing frequency, champagne. There were days I had to pinch myself to believe that I was really included. If you know much about human psychology, you will understand that though I no longer presented as an awkward teenager, my self-esteem was still seriously low. But for a little while, I was on cloud nine. My dream of being upwardly mobile was coming true. Well, then the cracks started to appear. A certain clickiness was evolving in the group, accompanied by a lack of kindness. And I began to learn that running with a fast group took an awful lot of energy if you want to keep up. And if you drop the ball, there's very little compassion. I realised I had landed myself in a way of being where the underlying motive was competition. I began to feel uncomfortable and to have an honest look at the quality of my own interactions with people. And I could sense that I was not as kind-hearted as I once had been. And I wondered if maybe I could give faith one more go. So I rocked up to church on Christmas Day, just like my family had done when I was a child. And I heard the most amazing message 
about the downward mobility of God. For the first time in many years, I listened to the story of the birth of the Christ child. The story of a poor young couple living in an occupied country. They were expecting a child and yet were required to travel the length of the country to be registered in a census. A story set against a political background of grinding rural poverty, political oppression and the stigma of illegitimacy. I listened to the story of how God chose these most humble and vulnerable human lives as the place of incarnation. The story of how the infinite glory and might of God chose poverty as the place from which to speak. Chose humility as the place of revelation. The God who speaks the cosmos into being chooses downward social mobility. I remember being riveted in my seat. Downward social mobility? Who would choose that? At that point in time, my whole life was motivated by the opposite. And yet I had to admit that while I was succeeding in my goal, it was not generating for me peace of mind or depth of character. I was intrigued by this message. I was confronted and I was afraid. What might I lose if I chose a path of humility instead of competition? I wasn't at all sure I wanted to do this. But somewhere deep inside me, I knew that I yearned for a kinder, gentler way of life. Now my situation was not unique because the values of our Western culture are geared towards being upwardly mobile. We live in a culture that celebrates wealth, class and success. It is so easy for us to get caught up in it and to desire upward social mobility. The trouble is, if God chooses to speak through a journey of downward mobility and we are caught in the throes of upward mobility, may we not be in danger of missing the word of life altogether? It makes sense that God chooses to reveal himself in humility rather than in competition. For the very nature of God is compassion. And compassion is a word which means to suffer with. Compassion is the opposite to competition. Of course, God reveals his very nature through humility and grace. This Christmas, we are here again, here before a manger, before a child laid in straw and surrounded by the warmth of farm animals and humble shepherds. 
We are here being reminded that the place where God speaks is the place of humility and simplicity. Will you allow yourself to be led on a journey of downward mobility? A journey of buying less and giving more? A, a journey of competing less and serving more? A journey of choosing kindness and compassion instead of competition? This is the journey that will lead you in the way of Christ. And on this journey, my prayer is that you will hear in each dawn the heartbeat of God. That you will find in each day the rising spirit of hope. And that you will discover in your living the presence of the Holy Child.